Hello and welcome to Sue Finley Designs. Today's video is on how I created this, these resin drips on this wood slice. Now, um, this wood slice was um, quite difficult to work with. Just let me put it down, it's quite heavy. Um, it was quite difficult to work with because the wood itself was quite soft. Um, and I didn't know how I was going to fix that so that the bits weren't breaking off. So I've experimented with it. I've tried using the resin to bind it all together and make it stronger. Now, as always with a lot of these videos, I experiment a little bit to see if I can come up with some new um, designs and ideas. Now, as you know, quite often I will have an idea in mind and quite often it doesn't work out quite the way I want it and as you're developing through the the whole process, other ideas come to mind and then you can often, quite often change what you're doing. So this is what's happened with this piece. I started with a general idea on what I wanted but then when it come down to it, I didn't know, um, as it progressed through, I found that what I was doing wasn't quite working, so I actually changed the plan as I went along. So basically that's what this video is about. So it's, I probably if I'd done this again, because I've got another three of these by the way, I would not do the same thing, I will try something different. So each of these videos will probably show you different ways um, on how I tackle these wood slices. So without further ado, let's get into the video and see how I went from a really soft and spongy wood slice to this resin piece. Okay. So what I started with was just hoovering any loose dirt and hairs from the wood slice. Now I didn't want to use a brush or anything to brush it down because the bark itself around the outside is actually very very fragile at the moment. It flakes off really e easily and is quite spongy so so I'm trying to use as little um, force on this as possible to preserve it. Now my first idea was to wrap it in glad wrap, cling film or whatever you want to call it to pour resin down the sides to try and get it to sort of um, harden up and not flakes so, so much so so the idea was just to cover the outside take the bottom pour some resin and away we go now I haven't used this technique before so this was just complete winging it just to see what happens um, after doing it I probably wouldn't do it the same way next time or I'll do, I'll adapt it in some way um, because obviously when you try these things out you then learn by your mistakes and what have you but the idea was sort of there but it was it needs improving on most definitely so if you have any suggestions I'd, I'd gladly um, listen to them and take them on board so once that was covered I decided I wanted to try and fill some of the cracks down the side of the um, slice with some of the gems that I have and as you can see I've poured them down the sides in between the slice and the, the cellophane wrap and the plan is now to add some tinted resin with a hint of glitter and have that pouring through the stone so pouring the resin on the top and then allowing it to drip onto the stones at the side Now this uh, idea was it worked in theory, as you can see the resin poured down the sides, but it didn't cover all of the stones down the sides. So, you know, I'd need to come up with a, a new plan on how I would create the same effect. So, so the, I'm currently thinking about it and seeing what other ideas I can come up with to achieve a similar effect, but without using so much resin. Now. When I poured the resin 
because this slice was so so soft it did actually soak up quite a lot of the resin so that worked really well in that the um, the wood slice took on a lot of the resin which actually did toughen it up a bit and it was certainly not flaky anymore after I removed the cellophane so for, for that purpose it worked quite well I mixed quite a few cups of resin and continued to pour it down the sides now this works like I say up to a certain point but then when you get to the bottom you get like a, um, a thick layer of resin at the bottom now that does work in that it does bind everything together but it wasn't really quite the look I was, I was after so like I say you know I, I need to work on a new plan for this so this is now been curing for several hours and um, I think off the top of my head it was about six hours of curing now I just tested the the top that was um, no longer tacky and the stones were stuck to the side of the wood so it was now safe to remove the glad wrap or the cellophane from the sides of the wood slice and just using scissors I just trimmed that down because I didn't want to manhandle this too much Here you can see that the resin didn't cover all of the wood very well so you'll see in areas where the, the lighter areas where there was no resin I breached those parts so I'm actually going to go back and brush resin into those areas so get them further into the cracks and um, try and get it as toughened as possible now where I'm poking with my finger you can see the resin the wood slice is actually quite strong now so those bits are not no longer flaking off so it did work well there but as you can see as for the pouring of the stones down the side it didn't work as well as I would have liked now I have these um, plastic trays with a lid that I had already in my stock that I just used for resin now this was a good size to, to, to fit the diameter of the wood slice so all I've done here is I've just lined it with a plastic bag, making sure that where the writing is, printing, is actually on the bottom so that it doesn't then stick to the resin. Because I know this from past experience that it does actually come off the plastic bag. So just make sure that's on the outside. And all I'm doing now is I'm just pouring some resin into this area. And don't worry that the tray itself is slightly domed because I'm actually going to remove the plastic and lay it a little bit flatter after a while it, for the time being it's just somewhere to keep it together while it's curing slightly so now I'm using the lid of the same tray so that I've got two pieces because the initial idea was to actually have two layers on this wood slice but later on you'll see it didn't actually work out the way I planned so but for the time being I'll show you what I did the idea of what I was doing and then you know if you can think of a better way of doing it then you create your own it gives you ideas for that so what I'm doing here is I'm just adding some of the acrylic gems that I used on the side of the slice at the edges because of when I put it on the top I want that to flow down the sides now I've also mixed up another batch of resin and now using an old brush I'm brushing on the resin and coating the areas that didn't get any resin on. Now it's not going to soak in quite the same. You could probably do a couple of layer, uh, layers of resin on this to get it nice and hard. But I just done, I think I've done two layers off the top of my head, um, if I remember rightly, just to make sure that, that that's well coated. At the end of it as well, what I do is I clean my brushes with some mineral turpentine uh, before it sets. So then I can reuse these old brushes again and again. So using the same acrylic gems that I used on the sides and in the resin, I'm now going to coat these in some tinted resin. So again using a little bit of India ink, I'm going to mix this in. And my plan was to force some of these gems into the cracks so where the, they, they didn't flow down when I poured them in. I'm now going to manually place these to give a bit more interest to the sides. 
we're just making sure that oh, this is all well coated so that when it cures these one are tinted and two they will set really hard on the wood Here you can see I'm just using a stick and my fingers to force some of these gems into some of the cracks. It was quite hard to work with because the resin was sticking to my gloves and as most of the pushing some in it was coming back out again. But well, you know I persevered with it and I was able to add the gems around the wood slice to give it a bit more interest. Now here I wanted to lay the resin that I'd done previously on the top. Now this is still quite soft. I've not let it cure for too long, probably um, an hour or two, so that it was quite thick. Now I've not done this technique before where I've actually tipped the resin onto the top, but the idea was to squeeze the resin out to the edges and force the resin drips to drip over the side. Now the reason for me doing this is that if I was to just pour the resin on the top of the wood slice it would have run down the sides, it would have been thin and you would have lost the effect. But by doing it this way the resin is quite thick and it will run very very slowly over the side so you'll get a nice resin drip effect in theory. Um, so running over the sides. So all I'm doing here I'm just using a bit of pressure with the plastic bag to force the resin out to the edges and then use applying a little bit of heat to warm it slightly just so that it makes the movement a little bit easier. I was actually quite lucky that when I tipped that over it actually landed quite central so you know that's something you perhaps have to play with. Now I'm just removing the plastic bag so that I can apply heat and force the resin to move to the edges and allow it to start dripping down the sides. As I mentioned earlier, my original plan was to create two layers of resin over the top. So I, I did actually have another layer here. So what I've done here is I just placed a plate underneath because I wanted to have this one running down the sides before I placed it on top of the wood slice. So I'm going to leave this for about half an hour just to let the resin just run down slightly. And again, just applying a little bit of heat to help that process. So in order to apply the new layer of resin, I've got to protect this piece with some plastic so that I can actually move the other one around a little bit. Don't worry about any creases or anything like that because we can deal with this later. And as you can see, I've got some nice resin drips happening over the side. So. The idea, like I say, was to create two layers. So I'm going to let that cure for a total of around about eight hours so that it's still soft for me to manage. Then I remove it later, but not too cured, but it's too hard to manipulate. And again, just applying a bit of heat to help with the process. So all up, this has been about six to eight hours, um, and what I did was I removed the plastic from the top, and I was my intention, like I say, was to do two layers. So I needed this to mould on top of the resin as best, uh, so the wood slice as best as possible. So when I come back to it later, we get a good fit. But I actually. When I thought about it, I didn't actually like it and decided to remove it. And what happened was that, because it was not fully cured, it was actually sticking on itself as well. So I thought, well, I might just use this another time and decided to remove it completely and then placed it back on top of the makeshift mould I'd made and let that cure. Now, because I changed my, you can see I've got lots of pieces on here, so I decided to pour more resin on the top 
and this is after I've decided this doesn't work. So away that goes. So mixing more of the same colours, I'm just going to apply more resin to the top to get rid of the creases on the top. And because we're applying more resin, some of the stones at the side become hidden. So we're going to apply more gems, acrylic gems, to the outside. Now these acrylic gems, um, I, always, I get a lot of requests for, from people wanting to know where I buy them from. Now I buy them locally here in Australia. And I've been searching online for various alternatives and I've found that on Amazon if you google diamond confetti you'll find the same product so what I've done is I've actually decided to become an affiliate for Amazon and I'm going to start placing links for products that I find on there that are similar to products that I use and can obtain in Australia so I will put in the description the links for the ones that I found that are a good match for these. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video and it's given you some ideas on what to do with your own resin wood slice or ideas on what not to do. Um, either way, if you like this video, please um, give it a thumbs up and better still, subscribe to my channel. So until next time, I look forward to seeing your creations. See you soon. Bye now.